You guys have asked for more FF8 love, and so here it is. I also know nobody cares about the challenge, and you're just here to stare at Idia. It's okay, I understand. But let's at least see if we can complete Final Fantasy VIII using only Idia anyway, shall we? And this will be fun. Idia is terrible. She starts at level 26, has near yeah, base stats, and her limit is easily the worst in the game. Oh, and our rules are going to make it even harder as well. So let's talk about them, shall we? Rule 1. Edia only. No other party members can be used in battle to make any commands other than killing themselves off. Rule 2. No cards. What's the point if we break things instantly after all? Card mods are allowed, however, with cards dropped in battle only. I cannot play Triple Triad. Rule 3. No chocobo world, it's way too broken. And rule four, no items allowed in battle. So I think that limits us pretty nicely. So let's go, shall we? And once we start, we grab both GFs from the console and then rush to a save point so I can mod Edia in. She's level 26, which is going to make the average enemy level now about 15 to 20, but also increase their stats. And my Edia is weak due to having no magic to junction. What could go wrong here? Well, the first major problem is Edia is bugged and can't use draw points. Yay! So first we leave Garden and head outside to fight a caterpillar and draw some cure magic and get some other weak spells from the other mobs here. Then head straight to Ifrit's cave. We're going to choose the longest timer here because we're going to grind a little. I'm going to draw 100 of each spell and also try to learn as many abilities as I can since the mobs in here are forced to be low level and do not scale with us. This means low EXP, which makes it the perfect chance to learn some GF abilities like card. Something we're sadly gonna have to use to learn the rest of our abilities and stay at a lower level right now. Once we get some better magic though later, I won't really care about leveling up. For now, we murder Ifrit and get a new GF. Then, it's off to Dollet for a fight with Biggs and Wedge, who go down in a few attacks. After, I draw 100 Isuna, and then it's Alvaret. We draw Siren and start stocking up on doubles. During this process, he's hurting me quite hard, so I need to cast Double Cure a few times to take my health back up. After we have Siren and 100 doubles, I slowly start to attack away, healing as required. When my health gets down to the yellow, I use a Limit Break, Ice Strike, which deals an awesome 2,000 1500 damage resulting in the win for me as for xatm sadly i'm not going to even try farming ap from it because that's just risky and i don't really have the junctions to manage it Next up is Ronaldo and Granaldo. I stock up on Shall, Protect, and Blind Magic, and then slowly slaughter them with Ice Sorcery. My attacks and magic are doing pretty much nothing at this point, but because Edia and Cypher are normally only in the party for an extremely short amount of time, they have their limit breaks available from 50% HP instead of the usual 25%. So I was able to use it a little earlier here, which saved me some time and came in clutch as once again, I ended with yellow health. Next up, grab the magical lamp and now it's time to get or try to get another summon, Diablos. At least with blind junctioned to status attack, this fight is nearly impossible to lose. I kill off Squall and Zal, then attack Diablos to inflict blind. Draw some Demi and apply double to myself, double cast Demi to do some huge damage, and to get the boss to cast Kyoriga on me to refill my health. Then I just refill up on Demi Magic, draw Cure again to refill that to 100 as well before Diablo uses Gravager on me and then I use two Limit Breaks to finish the fight. 
Now, using mid magic refinery from Quizo, I upgrade my low level spells into raw versions and then draw more low levels again to turn them into more raw spells until I'm at 100 of each. I also farm here turning everything into cards to learn more GF abilities like Encounter Non with Diablos and also buy some tents from Balam to turn into Kyoriga Magic. During this point we also get a few rare cards as when using a card on an enemy there is roughly a 5-6% to chance to get a rare card. The ones we got are Alvaret from Bybug and Jumbo Cactus from Glacial Eye. Once all this is done, I use card mod to turn all these new cards into items and then turn them into magic. Just sucks I can't actually play cards or we'd have so much more stuff right now. Once all this is done, we move on to Fake President. I kill off Squall and Zal and Fake President with a normal attack and then Gero Gero makes his appearance. I draw another double to take me back to 100 of them and then start to draw zombie magic from him. At least until he silenced me, completely ruining my plans for drawing. So I slowly attack my way through while he constantly puts me to sleep and slaps me. He does eventually go down and strength 20% plus 40% from Ifrit is really doing wonders for my attack now. Just a shame we can't force crits like we can with Squall. And now we get to relax until we get to Brothers pretty much. The first stage, Sacred, I draw 100 life spells for junctioning and draw cast protect on myself, then hit away. He does have a regen right now and I don't have float, but our junctions aren't totally terrible and we have Ifrit strength ability, so we can still manage to just attack away. That's going to change shortly though. As with no card playing, it's going to be a very long time now before we can get any new decent magic, since I'm also making sure not to level up too much since I would like to try for Ultima Weapon, and that's already going to be a nightmare because of Light Pillar, so I need to make sure he has as little speed as possible. Now that I have the actual working Switch Party Member command as well, that seems to have fixed my issue with drawing field spells with Edia, so I'm able to draw the float draw point here in the tomb. Then we move on to stage 2 of the boss. I apply protect and put float on both bosses before proceeding to murder them. Now it's time for the last boss rush of disc 1. Starting with Igurans, and while I'm sure the battle goes the way you all think it does, we draw Carbuncle, 100 breaks, and then Edia slaps them to death in two hits each. Then we have Edia forcing Cypher to fight Edia. Don't you just love these boss character runs? During the modding process though, I completely forget to equip my Edia with actual abilities. This means I can only attack Luckily enough, Cypher is low level and not much threat and goes down in a few hits. For Edia's side, from the fact I have no idea which one is talking at what point, I kill off the other characters and then start attacking where we come across an interesting glitch. The fight simply can't end. Normally, when you reduce her health, it triggers the ice attack on Squall. We had the dialogue line come up for it, but the transition just doesn't happen with Edia in the party. I tried having Squall in instead of Irvine as well, but it also doesn't trigger. The only possible way to advance is to have the correct party here. However, since we technically reduced Edia's HP using Edia, I'm counting that as a win and we'll move on. We're not going to let glitches stop our progression. So we advance on to disc 2. This is where I would normally RNG manipulate the card player in the prison for a Rosetta Stone, but I banned cards. So all we can do really is advance all the way through super casually until our next boss, a giant tank. 
I start off with protect and then begin drawing stops to use for status defense later. During this process, my health drops a little low, so I drop a cure. Then, back to drawing. It's at this point I fail to pay attention to Mana Beam right as I finish sucking up 100 stops, which drops me to below 200 HP, right as I use a Limit Break. And before I can heal, he attacks me and murders me. It's pretty embarrassing to die on this boss of all things. My own carelessness got the better of me here for sure. On attempt 2, I play it way safer, healing anytime I get to around 1500 HP, and then we blow it up by slapping it for 3 minutes. Right now, I think Edia is for sure a dom. Imagine the memes though if she kicked or stepped on things for her attack animation. Next up is Oil Boils, and this was actually an interesting fight. I went into it expecting it to be a complete cakewalk. It wasn't. I start off by hitting one of them and doing zero damage, but put it to sleep. Then I start casting double fire magic while healing as required. The damage coming in though is actually kinda high, and so my health drops pretty fast. So I adopt a new tactic. Since I'm blind and can't hit anything with melee attacks, I double cast sleep on them both. It doesn't last for long, but it does last long enough for me to take them both out with double fire spam. And now we're on to Norg and his tentacles. Hopefully Edia isn't one to enjoy the slimy luxury. Which ends badly. No Edia in the fight, so an instant reset. While I try to remod her in, this time completely replacing Squall, otherwise known as the Almighty Coffee, hint, hint down below, and this fight did not go as I expected. First, I wanted to draw magic, then remembered he has silence. So, I try to quickly open the pod to draw the Firefin. Once I have that, then I proceed to try and draw a bunch of magic. Ultimately, silence ends up landing, so now we have a problem. I can't draw. I can't heal. All I can do is press attack, which only does about 1000 damage a hit. All while I'm being assaulted by three enemies. Thankfully, my junctions are somewhat decent, and I put on HP 80% from Diablos, which proved to be invaluable with how low my HP dropped. Eventually, he lands poison on me as well. My health is in the yellow and I get a limit break. I try that not knowing how much damage it's really gonna do since it's been hit or miss the last few uses. But at nearly 5k, it wins the fight for me, which is great because I only had 800 HP left, which means without the HP 80%, I'd have lost nearly twice over. Then I convert some cards. Since I can't play cards, might as well get rid of the ones I have, like Minotaur and Sacred. Then convert Dino Bones into Quake Magic for a nice little boost. After that, it's a rematch with the BG tank. No drawing needed this time though, since its stock doesn't change, so we just slap it out of existence. Read a naughty magazine with the lovely Renoa, and then Garden is mobile. Before we do anything though, I need Gil. So it's time for a trick. Head over to any store and buy as many tents as you can. They each cost 1000 gil and we need 4 minimum. Then using Carbuncle's medicine refinability, turn these 4 tents into a mega potion which sells for 5000 gil, earning us a profit of 1000 gil. This means every time we convert 100 tents, we earn 25,000 gil profit. And since Squall isn't being leveled, that means we can't use seed exams to raise our rank. So this is the best gil method we have, and pretty much the only one we have. And hey, 
Speaking about raising funds, did you know about our coffee goal? We're raising money to hire an editor, which means more challenges, overpowered videos, brand new updated guides, lore videos, top fives, and so much more. If that sounds like something you want, then come support us even if it's just one dollar a month. If everybody watching this did that, we'd hit all of our goals listed right here. And... If that's not really your thing, then be sure to check out our merch, like the only flint hoodie, Primal Notebook, or even a sick phone case at primalstore.net. Now, head to Shumi Village and use the Ultima Draw Point. It costs gil, but it refills, and since the Switch Party Member command is now fully working, it means Edia can draw. Then, simply run around until it refills, letting us draw more to get 100 Ultima. This might seem excessive, but remember, you're likely imagining a situation where you have tons of magic and awesome abilities from cards. We don't have that. Now though, we make for Tom Berry King. I'm just sad I banned at Chocobo World though. We could have had some awesome stuff there. But first, I want to try Odin to remove the pesky time limit. The problem... With Edia in the party, the game freaks out and crashes and leaves me completely stuck with my other party member trying to get on the ledge. Fun fact, ladders are also super glitchy. So, no Odin, which means we have to do this with the timer active. Now, once we get into Tomberry King, I start off by applying Meltdown from the single Gala card mod that we got at the very start. Then, I put up Protect, Regen, and Haste, and begin attacking away. When it gets 2,100 health, I plan to heal since he does 1,600 damage a hit, but he freaking crits me, giving me a game over. So... For attempt number two, I go get Drain Magic first, put that on status attack and try again, since now I'll have more passive healing. But something weird happens. While Drain doesn't heal Edia for some reason, Tomberry dies really fast and I'm not sure why. I absolutely had way more hits land in the first attempt. Maybe attempt one we had the highest possible level it could be, since Tomberry King does not have a level cap like most of the other bosses and this attempt we had the lowest possible level that's the only reason i can think of to explain the massive difference in his hp between the two fights anyway now with tomberry though we have access to level up and level down so it's time to abuse them for some magic we can fill up on the basic element gar magic around balam meteor and flare from ruby dragons pain from ochu meltdown from gala tornado from frostivus and then we fight some blue dragons around atrobia for fury fragment drops which we can refine into aura magic now that we have all this new magic, our stats and status defense gains a nice boost. Just a shame I am limited to the terrible default GF abilities really, as that's going to cost me later I feel. But now though, let's test ourselves with Fujin and Raijin. First is Raijin. We one shot his soldier buddies and do a nice free k hit on Raijin since he has no good draws and then our health is low enough to try with Edia's limit which was disappointing. Guess it's based on her magic stat. Just a shame we can't force Edia to do crits so even with 220 attack I'm pretty limited on melee damage. For Fujin and Raijin, we kinda do the same, but making sure to draw Pandemonia first. Our new stats are pretty nice for where we are now, but just stats will fall off very heavily later, especially once we try Ultima Weapon and Griever, who both have instant kill attacks. Before that though, we have Cerberus, and this was infuriating. I kill off Renora and Coffee, and then put Shallop and Dispel his triple to stop him slowing me down with three attacks per turn. And I had wanted to draw 100 triple from him, but 
he berserked me before I could. So, I ended up attacking and killing him. Sure, I could reload a save and put berserk immunity on, but this is a challenge run, so we're rolling with no triple, which means no triple meteor spam later. I'm a sad boy now. Cypher next, and there's really nothing to say. He has no draws and no good attacks, so we just slap him down. On Edia, we draw Alexander, and then do a few melee hits on her. And now, that's basically all the easy bosses done. Most of the ones coming up have the ability to either one-shot me, or do extremely high damage very, very quickly. Well, Abaddon doesn't, who just gets hit with Kyogre a few times. And then in Esther, I get the free Rosetta Stone. Then on to the Ragnarok, we have the Propagators. But, well, they're Propagators, so go down in one hit. And now that we have the Ragnarok, we can actually do some good stuff. Starting with my favorite thing ever, Murdering Bahamut. And he's dealing a solid 1,000 damage a hit to me. So, I play it safe. Set up double protect and shell and then try a melee hit but that only does about 3000 damage to him even with meltdown applied so i change tactics and move to double casting meteor which does about five to six thousand damage per cast so about 10 to 12 thousand per turn he hits me with mega flare but thanks to my protection it only deals about 1600 damage so i'm not at the point of needing to heal just yet but when i decide to keep an eye on my hp he dies anyway and just to appease daft since we killed bahamut we name it after her then we try ultima which well, is just not going to happen. He is way too fast and there is zero chance of me killing him before he uses Light Pillar, an attack which is always max damage. I think the defend command from Brothers can survive it, but considering it's randomly used, we'd have to spend the whole fight using it, which means we still wouldn't be able to win because things like this happen. And sadly, we can't do Jumbo Cactus either, because every five times he get hit, he uses 10,000 needles. Another 100% death for me. And I just can't kill him in five turns. So, we're forced to move on. Which means, next up is Fujin and Raijin again. They don't have any good draws and go down in just a few attacks each, but I did completely forget about Fujin having Meteor in this fight. Next boss is not going to be so easy though, as it's time for Mobile Type 8, who has some very, very nasty abilities, including an attack that drops me down to just one HP called Corona, which is exactly how I ended up dying. For the second attempt, I take things much, much slower and more carefully. First, I set the battle speed in the config menu to its slowest, then when the fight starts, I put up regen and melt down him and slowly attack. As soon as I see the pods detach, I wait until Corona starts and then I instantly use Kyorga. Then I set up double, cast a couple of ultimas while being careful of a novel Corona. Once the pods reattach, I apply aura and start using Ice Strike to eventually kill the boss. I just made it sound simple but the fight took nearly 10 freaking minutes. And now we're on to Cypher, who of course takes no effort at all. So I smack Maldown on him and then just slap him a few times. Now though, it's time for Renoa and Adele. This fight is pretty straightforward, albeit a bit long. It basically revolves around healing myself every so often, healing Renoa pretty frequently, applying Meltdown to Adele, and then slowly smacking her to death. Same with the sorceresses right after. I attack and kill the first bunch, and then when the final one spawns, I apply Meltdown and smack away once the countdown appears though, I do heal up, because I can't remember how much damage its Ultima will do to me, but it was a needless concern as it was only about 2000 damage. And now, 
we're on to Ultimecia's castle. All of our abilities are sealed, so let's do this. Swing Sphere first. And I learned my lesson from previous challenges and protect against death. But since all we can do is attack, that's what I do to get the win. Once we beat it, I unlock magic. With Edia in the party though, the game glitches when I try to make the chandelier fall. So, looks like no try point fight for me. And yes, I know I could use three normal characters to drop it, but for now, we'll just use the other bosses, like Red Giant. And thankfully, there's no three hour fight for it this time, thanks to Triple Demi, which massively murders its large HP pool. Next, I unlock the draw command and we move on to Tiamat. Now, because my junctions let me absorb elements, it's actually impossible to lose this fight. So, I draw Eden and slap him. It's nice murdering Bahamut twice. Afterwards, I unlock save and make for the final showdown with Ultimecia. And this starts horribly i keep getting game over because all my characters are dying before i can get edia in the party and after way too many attempts i say screw this and mod half the party out to improve my chances which unfortunately doesn't work because the game just automatically puts them straight back in first form goes well though and i get some buffs set up Grieve, on the other hand, went horrible with me, getting doomed. And then him blowing away my HP junction, meaning of course I'm going to game over, since I can't win the fight in 30 seconds. So, time for another try. First form and second form go down pretty easily and without any real trouble. Of course, I make sure to set up my buffs and regen beforehand. Third form gets meltdown and then hit away while I keep my HP up. Fourth form is identical to the third as thanks to my buffs and junctions, I don't really take much damage. And honestly speaking, there's not much to talk about until we get to the final form, as this is where things change a lot. The boss gets access to House Judgment, an attack which drops me down to 1 HP just like Corona did, so I need to keep an eye out for that and Kyurga whenever it goes off. I also have my magic and GFs being constantly blown away. So, time is of the essence here. So I apply Meltdown and start using Triple Meteor, which each cast does 10,000 damage or so per turn. That is 30,000 damage thanks to Triple though. Much better than my 5,000 damage melee hit, which lets us speed through a bit. Healing for every Hell's Judgment that is used as well. Eventually though, a second form of the boss is summoned for it to draw Apocalypse from. Once this happens, I stop with the Meteor Spam and begin with normal attacks, and eventually the dialogue starts to play. So, we just need a few more hits now. But, then the boss uses Hell's Judgment on me and drops me to 1 HP. The worst part is, I'd just selected attack as well, so I can't even heal. Thankfully though, the boss goes down on this hit, as if it didn't, I would have died most likely. So, I guess Seed wasn't needed after all. Edia could have saved the world herself, but realistically, this was to be expected, if I'm honest. Once you actually know what you're doing with the junction system, any sort of solo character challenge is entirely possible. I had expected a little more difficulty though with not allowing card playing or Chocobo World, but it is what it is. 8 is just way too easy and even if I leveled up to 100, it still would have been entirely possible as well. But for now, I just need to let you guys know there might not be a video next week due to time availability for me and 
Daff obviously can't do edits on such short notice, given she's not actually hired yet. Hint, hint, coffee down below if you want to change that. We are going to try for a video next week. There's no promises, though. But for now, remember to subscribe to both this channel and Primal Vodge channel, the new home of Let's Plays and Walkthroughs, and I'll see you all later.